you can just call the, the name of this episode is just ready fire aim because we're already recording we just, <laughs> you just already re- come in mid-sentence just, yeah just come in right there mid-sentence bam beautiful for those of you guys for those of you guys just joining us i'm taking over now for those of you guys joining us <laughs> welcome to the talking average fitness podcast um mr sam just pulled the trigger as we were mid-conversation we were like we need to start recording now because we are having a go we're fired up and we've got a 40 minute we got 40 minutes on the clock 40 minute amrap talk about stuff you can see it your screen just went black there we go you can see it sam's on track um so my name is kevin mccarthy joining me today is our usual host mr sam burns how are you doing today sam russian life fired up ready to talk we go i like you (laughs) we are fired up all right boom so we 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 weren't ready we fired um where are we going to aim this thing today well so the thing that we were talking about is value, you know, and, and, it, and this comes out in a bunch of different ways. This expresses itself a bunch of different ways, both for us as coaches and for the clients that we work with, you mm-hmm. know, and um, I think the easiest thing to start with is like, we are not a Gold's Gym, right? Nope. So a Gold's Gym or, you know, down in Massachusetts, like a workout world or something like that, is built on what's called an anti-utilization model. They do not want you to show up, right? They want to collect your your $10 a month, Mm -hmm. and they want 1% of the people who they collect $10 a month from to show up. Because Mm -hmm. that way they have huge recurring revenue, but very little actual like use of equipment and people, and you know, it reduces costs for things like cleaning the showers and stuff like that. So the overhead is lower. Yeah. If Everybody who had a Gold's Gym membership or a, what's the, Planet Fitness. If Planet Fitness. Had a Planet that's, Fitness, yeah. yeah. If everyone, also, hands up if you had a Planet Fitness membership for like five years and went three times. That'd be this guy. Um, <laughs> I never, they, they never, they didn't have a Planet Fitness, at, I mean, being from the middle of nowhere. They, there, there is one in Waterville, Maine now, I think, but it was like I lived in a town, I was half an hour from everything. I was like, I'm not yeah. going to drive half an hour to a gym. So I just had like dumbbells and eventually a barbell and some stuff in my garage but I, I if i was had access to one i probably would have been in both yeah okay so it's but, you can identify right? yeah if everybody who had a planet fitness membership showed up they would be in serious flipping trouble you'd have lines out the door for the, for the smith for machine the one smith machine <laughs> right and like <laughs> you know like the yoga studio is full i think it just froze on me we're gonna find out in a bit here well um, i can still hear right. your voice there we oh, go we're back so it, it would be a problem, right? So go back to the original point. They don't want you there, right? They mm-hmm. want some of you to be there some of the time. That's the opposite. Like I, as a trainer, as a person who CrossFits, as a person who understands the CrossFit methodology, I want you to be there. I, I don't want you to be there every day because, you know, talking about recovery like we did last week, I want you to be able to give your body time to recover, but I want you to be there three to five times a week consistently. Over time, mm-hmm. avoiding injury, that's how we get people to like, you know, radically improve their lives. And that's what we want, right? Well, if you don't do that, you don't get the value of the program, <clears throat> right? Mm-hmm. Now, now that we've said that, let's talk about kind of the value itself. Um, you know, as, as coaches, we all have story that we have been a part of right now give i'll give an example i had a a woman who at my first affiliate um we ran a kids program and shout out to luis alvarez he ran the like the little little kids program and it was hilarious to like watch him just like screw around and play with kids and you know just run a killer class and Uh, This woman would come in and would drop off her kid and the kid would run around, take class, and she'd hang out and she'd watch. And I spent a fair amount of time, like at the affiliate at that time, and we'd we'd chat. And every single time I'd be like, you know, you can do what he's doing. You know, you could, we run an on-ramp program. I'm going to show you, I can show you everything. She was like, "Ah, ah." flash, flash. Flash forward two years, and her whole life has changed. 
fitness and nutrition and accountability are cornerstones of her life. And she's in better shape. She feels better. She feels more capable. Like she's, she's one of those five day a weekers. Mm -hmm. And she comes in and she's like, she's making gains head over feet, just crushing it. And one of the, one of the, like the stories that is nearest and dearest to my heart. When I think of people who get the value of the program, right? You have a, do you have a story like that, that um, like pops into your brain when we talk about that? Not in the sense of, you know, someone for, for years wasn't, wasn't interested, didn't seem interested. And then just all of a sudden they were able to, you know, they gave it a shot, took a chance. And, you know, I, I don't have a, a, an individual story in that regard um, or that kind of like follows that timeline. But <clears throat> like, I, I, if you've coached CrossFit for a little bit, for a lot of bit, you know, all these people that like have, you know, and people will tell you, I've come so much farther in whatever time they've been doing CrossFit than I ever thought possible. Yeah. Like I'm fitter now at 45 than I ever was at 25, you know, like stuff like that, that it sounds like a cliche. I mean, I mean, you're a great example of it, right? Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like such a cliche, like, oh, I'm fitter now at 45 than it was at 25. But like that happens for people. Yeah. You know, you walk inside of a CrossFit gym and you're like, you see people upside down in a handstand they're walking on their hands they're climbing a rope there i mean yesterday we did um i believe this on crossfit main site uh mm -hmm. we we pulled this one it was the 20 minute amrap was five uh pullovers yeah 20 vfs one minute plank oh you would have been loving it sam anyways yeah. um we're teaching a gymnastics pullover and if you don't know what that is you can either give it a little google foo or um it's like a backflip pull up Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not really joking. It's basically like a backflip pull up and you end up on top of the bar on a support like you would with a muscle up. Um, and everybody that came into the gym that day, barring any sort of injury or something that would, would prevent any sort of bar work was doing some variation or some sort of like skill progression for a pull up. And it's like, that's so cool. You know, some people were like, I haven't done this since I was a uh, eight year old on a jungle gym, just flinging myself around. I didn't know what it was, but I was just flinging around in a bar. Haven't done it since then. And here you are literally for some people like 40 years later, yep. doing it again. And it, that, that's just cool. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't have much else to say about it. Aside from like, I just, I sat there watching his class. We're going through it. I'm like, you know, making my way around the room. It's like, Man, everybody here is doing some sort of turn over the bar, be it backwards, forwards, partials, you know, working on a skill type thing. Yeah. Um, they're all doing that. And it's stuff that they never would have when they started CrossFit. It, when, when they're starting CrossFit, they're like, you know what? My goal is to do a gymnastics pullover in three years. <laughs> like that, that's not, you know, no, <laughs> no, one comes no, in. One's, no one's walking in to be like, you know what? I really hope happens. I hope I learn. A gymnastics pullover yeah. which in the crossfit realm is like super complex gymnastics then you know we have our coach colin that always humbles people's like yeah we teach this to seven-year-olds it's like yeah. oh all right <laughs> yeah cool sick um but you know in in the the scheme of gymnastics in in regards to crossfit it's a pretty uh complex movement that you know uh, until it was posted on main site uh, a few weeks ago uh you know i hadn't seen it posted in any sort of cross it programming so mm -hmm. um stuff like that's just cool where people progress farther in whatever time they've been doing cross than they ever thought possible i never thought i would back squat this much i never thought i'd be able to run this fast i never thought i would lose x amount of weight i never thought i would lift this much or do these things um that kind of stuff is just cool and if you've been a part of crossfit you you see it every day yeah and and i I'm, i want to say i'm not going to guess about who it might have been but um like that particular workout and stuff like that in general the pullover shout out to uh the gymnastics course also known as crossfit gymnastics it super talented bunch of smes who will you know come in and teach you that stuff make you way more comfortable with you know just gymnastics in general but you know the guy who taught my seminar tony um i'll never forget it he's like um 
yeah, this is the stuff that seven-year-olds learn. And so I'm going to teach you mm -hmm. like you're a seven-year-old, you know? Yeah. Um, because they don't have any of the self-limiting belief that, you know, 30 and 40-year-old adults do. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you're right. Nobody walks in thinking like, I want to do a gymnastics pullover, right? They might think, I want to do a push-up or I want to do a pull-up or something like that. Mm -hmm. But like almost certainly nobody's like, I want to learn how to hang squat snatch. Like, yeah. So if they don't come in wanting those things, but over the course of time that they're there, they're coming consistently, they're working out hard, intense, uh, relative to their capability, um, they're staying injury-free, they learn those things, right? Mm -hmm. What do we think, I mean, I, I know because I have very specific examples and I have my own personal experience, but what do you think is the carryover for that person spending that time in the gym and learning things like a gymnastics pullover or a hang squat snatch. Like, what's the real world carryover for that person? And I'm not just thinking in terms of like movement mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. but like, unless you're hanging out with your kids on a jungle gym at a park for a gymnastics pullover, there's like almost zero real world carryover, right. which, is fu which is fine, right? Mm -hmm. I think the bigger thing that you take away from that, one, is the neurological pliability. Like oh, you're, 100%. Yeah. you know, you're, you're doing something weird with your body. And the fact that it's different and not what you do is what makes it weird. And you're attempting to step by step, work your way through that. That's what's adding wrinkle, wrinkles to your brain, man. Mm -hmm. Like you're getting smarter and more capable when you do that. Right. Yep. But even further than that, how much, how much positive net effect you think that something like that is, and, and multiple somethings like that throughout the course of a person's lifetime has on that person's trajectory through life? I mean, I, I think a ton, whether it's conscious or subconscious, like when you learn a new skill, like the, the confidence in yourself, yeah. your overall, like maybe, you know, I don't know if self image is the right wording for it, but I'll use it. Um, like your self image, your, your, perception of yourself, your confidence in your abilities. You're like, Hey, I walked in the gym today, had no idea what a gymnastic pullover is. And now I'm doing them. You know, if you're someone that was able to pick up on that skill and you know, you have the requisite strength to be able to express that and learn it, mm -hmm. you have people doing, or that person's doing gymnastic pullover. They're like, wow, like I came in today, something completely new on the whiteboard yeah. and I fucking smashed it. Right. And I got it like that, right. you know, the, the, the amount of, I think just that alone yeah. has an absurd amount of value as you then go forth in life. You now have so much more confidence in your ability to handle whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I just walked in the day and to the gym today and just started doing backflip pull-ups. Yep. Okay. Everything else today is going to be so easy <laughs> because I should, <laughs> and, and even know? if you didn't do backflip pull-ups, it's like, yeah. I, I tried backflip pull-ups. Yeah. I did a I version of them and yeah. I see where the path is. Yeah. I was hanging yeah. on a bar. I was upside down on a bar. I was, right. I mean, cause that's a big thing for people, right? The, the, the inversion, oh, you know, yeah. that's, whether, whether it's on their hands or on a bar. Um, so, you know, one thing we did is we were kind of like leading people through this progression is mm -hmm. did instead of like, you know, starting with, Hey, let's go backwards because, you know, if anything can make being upside down worse, it's going backwards into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we'd have people like set up like low bars, basically like mm -hmm. barbell strapped into the rig at, at a yep. certain level and just had people like front roll over it. Yep. So it's like, okay, you've, you have now been upside down on the bar yep. and that does two things. One, you kind of rip the bandit off, so to speak of you have been upside down on the bar mm -hmm. Two, you now know that as soon as your hips get to the bar, mm -hmm. you're not going to fall off. You're safe. Because your hips are your hips are laying on the bar. Yeah. So it's like if you can get there, like now that you've gone through it forwards, if you can get there right. backwards, it's like even if you don't get the full pullover like to a support, if you can get there, it's like you're not gonna fall. Yeah. And it kind of like can increase your confidence in that where it's you know, um nothing bad. It, you know, it's not as scary anymore because you've you've been upside down, you got your hips on the bar. Yeah you get the benefit from, from that, or like the increased confidence just within that movement. Right. Um, so yeah, even if you're not doing the full movement, the, the, the confidence, the, 
um, building of, like you said, neurological pliability, yeah. um, all that stuff has massive carryover into a person's life beyond just the strength and body awareness and physiological adaptations that may occur from that. Oh yeah. So now let's extrapolate that out, right? As this person continues to come in, and it sounds like, you know, I, I know what you do mm -hmm. at Tilt. I, like I know the programming and I know like where the programming is coming from and why the programming is structured the way it is because I know.com. And so like I know that classes run by caring and qualified coaches doing things like that where athletes are taken care of and coached and held to standards not because we want to like make them work too much harder but partially because of safety but also because we're trying to we're trying to elicit something deliberate right it's not haphazard people mm -hmm. are going to get better when they do that mm -hmm. and so if they're coming three to five days a week consistently staying injury free they're getting better they're getting physically more capable and then on top of that they're getting increased confidence they're getting increased neurological capability they're staying sharp they're they've got a can-do attitude mm -hmm. um where had you talked to that person five years earlier or before they started crossfit that might not have been a central part of their pers their personality right mm -hmm. what is the value then that CrossFit has played in that person's life, like it, it, insane. You, like you, it, you're you're a different human. You're you're not yes. the same human being. You literally, from again, you know, whatever the timeline is. You three years ago, you walked into a CrossFit gym. It's now three years later, and you yeah. you're that person that's been coming three to five times a week. You've been consistent. Yes, the whole deal. You are now a like fully evolved human being. Mm -hmm. You, you've you've leveled up you've moved on to your and again if you're going to continue doing crossfit you're like this isn't even my final form bro okay, <laughs> so, um dragon ball z you, what's you, up yeah exactly <laughs> uh uh so it's like you you're a fully evolved human being you're a new person you're not the same human that you yeah. were three years ago even though you might like you know facial structure wise whatever like kind of sure. you look the same you are a vastly different human being in three your your life has changed it's yeah. and you know it, it's insane amount of value insane amount of change that that those people get exactly from coming to a crossfit gym and and, and, I, and I agree i mean as, and speaking as a person who did not do crossfit until he was 30 right yep and mm -hmm. now i'm closer to 40 than anything else i'm in a position where i am stronger than i ever have been now, that's not saying a lot because I was not strong at all before I started <laughs> consistently doing, you know, resistance training. Yeah. But I'm more capable. I, you know, I have a level of confidence and a way of moving through the world that I did not have before CrossFit. You know, so the value, you cannot calculate, you cannot put a price tag on the value that CrossFit has brought into my life. Right? not possible mm -hmm. which dovetail, dovetails very nicely into you know the kind of the second part of this equation which is affiliate owners and coaches you have a responsibility like this this thing that we've just described is experiences the people doing the pullovers the the person who comes in and they they watch their kid play and they say well i can't do that but then a couple years later their life is radically different that is a massive responsibility to take on like you change people's lives when they come into your class it's not just sally or john coming and trying out crossfit and seeing if it's for them it may or may not be and that's that's fine as greg glassman famously said crossfit is for anybody but it might not be for everybody you know what i mean mm -hmm. but if they choose to come in and stay you like they are putting themselves in your hands and you wield a tremendous amount of potential power right and you have an opportunity affiliate owners and coaches to really level up your service offering are you talking to these people about are you giving them long-term progressions 
do you check in with your athletes once a quarter at least and say, hey, what are you working on for goals? Like you see some stuff that we do here in the gym, what are you doing? What's important to you? You see some stuff um, that you want to do outside of the gym. How can I support you to get there, right? Um, you know, uh, nutrition challenges or just nutrition awareness. Hey, everybody, you know, it's we're heading into the holiday season. It's cakes and cookies up to our eyeballs. What's your plan? Yep. You know, and and even eat, if your plan is yeah, even if your plan is YOLO, cool, yep. bro. Just like tell me because accountability yeah. matters, right? Yeah. If they do have those goals and then you can provide value to help them shorten time and achieve their goals through something like personal training like do those things bro like help your people do the things they want to do mm -hmm. because if you don't you will never ever ever get compensated in a manner that is commensurate with the value that CrossFit provides in people's lives. All right, let me say that a different way. That person who's had their life changed, me, right? You ask that person, put a price tag on CrossFit. Like how much has CrossFit benefited you, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna come up, they're gonna be like, you can't do that. You can't put a price tag on what it's given me. You can come at it from another way and say, how much would I have to pay you every month to never do CrossFit ever again? Ooh. Right? Wow. How that much would, would <laughs> you want to talk about finding value? Wow. How much would I have to pay you every single month to have you <clears throat> never walk into a gym, lift a barbell, do a pull up, do a burpee, maybe burpees, yep. whatever. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> like, you start to really think, like, wow, like, how far does this yeah. value that it's had in my life go? Wow, yeah. And then take that big number because for some people it's, it's, it's I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, let's, like let's, you, could, you couldn't pay me to not do CrossFit. Like ex most, people, exactly. I'm, I'm, most people that walk through the doors, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking through like our, our members that come in here, you know, right. all throughout the day, like morning, evening. And I'm just like, I mean, as CrossFitters, if you are a CrossFitter, you know this. If, if you're a CrossFitter and you're like, no, that's not me, you're just in denial. You're all psychopaths. <laughs> you're all we are all psychopaths we are you're we like, are you're like hmm, 200 burpees game on throw some thrusters in there why not why not do it do it twice awesome sick right. uh, second you know, round and, and go yeah yeah exactly we're in we're in so much you know you know like wow that sucked really bad but we'll see you guys all tomorrow i mean we talked about this in one of our like we're we keep coming back like we we all are psychopaths for this thing that we all love called crossfit i'm trying to i don't think people that are coming into our gym anyways that I yeah. see on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think I could, especially like with the community aspect, right? With the, ah, the friends. And non-tangibles. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Like if, if you were like, hey, I'm going to take this thing away from you. Right. Like how much would I have to pay you to never come back in here again? Never come back. I, I would love for like, you to, like question of the day, put that to your members. Oh my gosh. I, I should like, I, so, okay. Uh, um, I'll text Colin. Cause he's got, he's got the morning tomorrow. I'll be like, Hey, you should put this on the board. Like how much would we have to pay you to <laughs> people might be up. getting a weird idea when they come in the gym. Be like, what do you mean? How much? Um, well, so, so this is, yeah. so, so this is where all that comes. Let's pick a number. $5,000, yeah. right? Sure. You would, you yeah. would have to pay me $5,000 a month, yep. which because I'm lazy, get a calculator. That's, Sixty thousand dollars a year, right? Yes, sir. The full mm -hmm. that's that's a salary plus for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to pay me enough for another job if it's five thousand dollars to never show up and do CrossFit ever again, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. How much is the average monthly membership for a CrossFit gym in America? It's probably somewhere between like a hundred and eighty and two hundred bucks. It'd be mm -hmm. like a, across mm -hmm. the country, be my guess. It, it's actually lower than that. For those of the you average. who don't know, yeah. So Kevin's in okay. Boston. That skews things. Right? I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's about 150 bucks a month is the average okay, that, right. unlimited monthly membership in America. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. You'd have to pay me 5000 to never do it, mm -hmm. but I'll only pay 150 to do it. To do it. Yep. Right? So mm -hmm. that gap in there 
that's the money that's not paid to trainers. That's the money that's not paid to affiliate owners. And I don't highlight this to be like, we should all be driving Bentleys. It's not like that. <laughs> it's like the average, if you're lucky and you get like set up as a full-time CrossFit coach with a salary mm -hmm. and benefits, it's maybe mm -hmm. 50K, right? Yep. And mm -hmm. if we think about service providers, especially in healthcare, who have years and years and years and years of experience and education and intimate relationships with their clients that they see five times a week, how much would mm -hmm. it cost how much would it cost for you to see your lawyer five times a week for an hour a day? How much would it cost <laughs> for you to see your doctor five times a week for an hour a day? Hell, a I lot of people bankrupt. don't right? Here, right. Here, here, here's the deal. Like we work in a healthcare service field. Yeah. It, yeah. And and it's bargain basement prices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, well, because people don't think about it as like the health and fitness industry as healthcare, right? But it's the that preventative is, that side. That is shifting. It is the preventative but side. It, 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 it's shifting for sure. We are seeing like an evolution. It's it's happening slowly but surely. Sure. But it's like most people, if you say, yeah, I'm a healthcare provider, that like – you wouldn't think CrossFit coach and healthcare provider are in the same bucket, you know, like sure. healthcare provider is, I know it should, but it's like healthcare providers, like white coat stethoscope went to 10 years of medical medical school. And a CrossFit coach is my full-time job is just sweatpants. Right. 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 Um, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> akin to, uh, um, that's mean. I'm not going to say that. I was going to say akin to a physical education teacher, but they do an amazing job as well. They do an amazing Sorry. job. But it's, but it's like, but people's perception of it, right? Absolutely. Like, yes. Not yes. that not that PE teachers Good, are valuable, but it's like, but it's but it's the people's perception of it. Yeah. Is like it, it's the value, the, the perceived value is lower than it should be, right? Yes. Whereas, yes. like, we are in the preventative side of healthcare. If you come see me five days a week for oh. however long you don't need to go see your doctor as often as you maybe did or mm -hmm. might have to, if you didn't come see me mm -hmm. type thing. Right. Um, I love Greg Glassman's uh, analogy of the, the lifeguard versus swim coach. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, if you, if you're drowning, mm -hmm. you don't need a swim coach. You need a lifeguard. And those, are the doctors, if you're drowning, you have all these health issues. You need a doctor. If something's yes. happening, you need a doctor. Yeah. But it's like, if you're not drowning, you need a swim coach. And if you have a swim coach, odds are you're not going to drown. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, and if you're not going to drown, then you don't need the lifeguard because yeah. you had the swim coach prior. And that was an amazing, I may have worded that wrong somewhere in there, but that's, that was the gist of the analogy. No, um, I mean, that's, that's accurate. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and I, I think that really is accurate for, fitness professionals and coaches alike is like, you are the swim coach. You are teaching people to swim mm. so that down the road, they don't need the lifeguard. Well, let's, let's, let's phrase this. Let's step back and you know teaching people to swim. Let's make it more blunt and more direct. Every mm. CrossFit trainer, good, bad, or indifferent because CrossFit coached poorly will still work. Yep. Every CrossFit trainer is in the business of saving people's lives. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and here's another thing that like I, I don't know why it popped into my head, but like we're talking about numbers and things like that. A lot of times we think in CrossFit in terms of like market saturation, like well this gym's over here, and so we can't have too close. We got to be over here because we don't want to compete, bro. You're not going to compete for every person that does CrossFit. There are over one thousand nine hundred people who don't. You know, yeah. there's, there's no competition. We're nowhere near market saturation, right? Yeah. No. And, and I love that you talked about like white, like a lab coat and a stethoscope. What does that person look like? They look like a healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. What is stopping anybody in a CrossFit gym from looking like a healthcare professional? It's too much Lululemon. Well, yeah, we all love you, <laughs> let's be honest, but it's nothing is the answer. Yeah. And so like, I'm thinking about like, you know, the CrossFit affiliate of my dream is a place where when you go to take a dump in the bathroom, 
it looks like a place you're comfortable paying $300 to take a dump to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I'm not pulling that number out of my ass. Three hundred dollars is the price that is paid at an Orange Theory to go essentially unlimited thirty classes a month. That's what you pay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, <clears throat> and when you think about like it's Orange Theory, Orange Theory sucks at fitness. <laughs> like, and I don't mean that like it doesn't work because if you do things, it will work. But right. there is not the same level of scientific rigor and methodology that backs up what they are doing over there you know and the, yeah. their trainers their exercise instructors are awesome and they're energetic and they have to be because if you're not you're fucking fired you yeah. know personality plus absolutely yeah. you know now imagine an orange theory where they were doing crossfit like that'd be the richest fucking crossfit gym in the world Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's stopping coaches, affiliate owners from providing the level of service that is equal to that and mm -hmm. reaping the benefits so that you can grow and provide service to greater number of people, which by the way is like how you operate ethically in a capitalist society. Like you reinvest in your programs to help more people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like... The only way you do that is you've got to level up your service. You have to have your fucking standards have to be right at the top. Mm -hmm. And then if you've raised your standard, you raise the level of service to match those standards. You raise the level of service to match the standard, you have earned the right to raise the price. Mm -hmm. As long as you make clear to your members where that value is going. Mm -hmm. Does your shitter look like a $300 a month shitter? You know? Is your, yep. is your gym cleaned three times a week or more, yep. right? Is your equipment serviced? Mm -hmm. Like, do the, do the collars on the bar spin or not? It's a binary yep. statement. It's one or the other. <laughs> do know? the chains on the rower, you know? Right. Do the chains on the rower, I, I don't know the word for that. Like, when they pull, is it smooth? Yeah, That's absolutely. smooth pull. Is, is the equipment <laughs> clean? Yeah. You know, do they have showers? Are the showers cleaned? Does your staff have a weekly staff meeting where mm -hmm. you actually talk about, hey guys, big picture, this is what we're going to do for, you know, not just the year, this, these are the programs we want to run, this is, you know, the number of people we want to, we want to, we want to help. Hey, we even want to, we want to do a fundraising event for the entire year. We want to raise $50,000 of money that is disposable that we can donate to this charity. How are we going to get there? You know? Like... Is that a, how is that a bad thing that a yeah. business redirects their efforts and energy into growing such that they can donate $50,000 to charitable organization of like, have the members pick, you know, yeah. that would be amazing. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that community? <clears throat> yeah, that, that'd be absolutely incredible. It'd be psycho. Mm -hmm. Right. And so now put a button on it, we don't pay enough for CrossFit. We don't pay enough for the value that CrossFit provides. Now, there are some places where I pay enough. Like in my mm -hmm. professional development, I pay. Mm -hmm. I, yep. and, and I And I pay because I'm seeking out subject matter experts. I'm seeking out the best people in the world to mm -hmm. teach me things. And um, I'll come back to that really quick. But we don't pay enough for CrossFit because CrossFitters don't take, the CrossFit coaches and affiliates, they don't take themselves seriously. You know, when we start yeah. acting like healthcare providers, like we are saving people's lives instead of providing a dirty place to do burpees, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yep. And even just talking about it, we can be like, shit, how awesome would that be? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, which place do you want to work at? Are you like at the, the, the place that has the $300 shitter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I mean, and, and to be fair, it's like I have full credit to CrossFit Tilt and the community and the business and everything that, that Max and LJ um, have, have set up here is the, the whole facility is professionally cleaned yes. three times a week. Yes. You know, like the, the, 
it's, it's some part in us, some part in like other staffs and cleaners that like do service the equipment, oil the chains and oil the barbells and mm -hmm. make sure everything, you know, excess chalk is, is scraped mm -hmm. off the, the knurling and the pull-up bars and everything's ready to rock. You know, I, I, know this would get Den I know this would get Denise all, you know, fired up is the wall ball wall has all of the laces facing out. It's like organized by color and weight. Amen. And the whole thing. You know, you, you know the numbers so you can read them. <clears throat> yeah. So, you, you know, um, and, uh, everything set up, organized, clean, the whole deal. Um, so it, it's, it is quite the professional taking care of environment and facility and the whole thing, you know, full, full shout out to CrossFit Tilt. Amen. Love that. You know, and, yeah. and hopefully, you know, there's an opportunity. I have no idea at this point, like who is listening to this thing and where they are and what they're, ability to like interact with either the business owner that they that they deal with is but like you know tell somebody tell somebody who is in your crossfit space who is a coach or an owner hey i love you um and i want you to be successful because i want this thing to continue help changing people's lives you know yeah. do more because we can all do more yeah. you know and it's and it's and i and i and i don't say that to trivialize what so many affiliate owners are going through. Like it's hard to run a small business. It's so it, hard. It's incredibly hard to run a small business. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, treat it like coaching development, right? I want to be a better coach. I hire a professional to help me get there. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a better business owner, you like it or not, if you own a business, you are a business owner, then hire a coach, someone who can help you Figure navigate the waters and yeah you know? exactly and like i don't know a single i, I personally i'm sure they exist but i personally don't know a single affiliate owner who got into the business of owning an affiliate to be like i want to make money yeah they had a life-changing experience with crossfit and they're you know what you know they want to do that for other people they want they yeah. want to bring that to their community exactly um, but there's a responsibility you know, like like when you take on coaching there's a responsibility with people's lives when you take on running a business, there's responsibility for everybody who works for you and the people who walk in and things like that. I had a, I had a great story. This is that other thing I was going to come back to. Um, this guy, he's a salesman. And he, in his town, I think it was London, he called a bunch of different um, psychologists. And he was very judicious about it. He picked the right person. And he called this psychologist or this psychiatrist, I think it was a psychologist, and he said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pry, but um, how much do you make a month? And the person, you know, came out, whatever the value is, $10,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, cool. I would like to pay you $10,000 to teach me as much as you can in one day. And the person said, yes, immediately, right? Yeah. yeah. That person spent a month and a half preparing, and what that guy got in one day is it's like liquid gold like yep. the understanding of psychology and for a person who works in sales he like that's everything for him right yep and that's a huge investment of course but what do we think the roi for something like that is going to be for that dude like and, and yeah how much what Incredible. was the ROI? so you've done work with denise what's the roi on doing anything with denise oh man it like double, triple, five times, 10 times. I mean, it's just like, it's, you, you can't put a number on it. Same as, you know, when you're like, what's the value of like, you know, doing CrossFit and changing your life. Like if, if you're a CrossFit coach yeah. and you get any amount of time, five minutes, 50 minutes, five hours, five days with Denise Thomas, yep. you are going to come out and program. like a, shout out to Denise coach development program, CDP, the whole thing it like if you're looking for the best look no farther um and it's like if, if you get any amount of time with denise thomas like that the return you're going to get as a coach on that time is unthinkable yeah it's incredible really it, it really is and she and it's not just because she works for crossfit seminar staff or anything like that she coaches classes really well and she cares and she wants people to be better yeah. mm -hmm. and and that's what she delivers and it's and it's, she also holds herself mm -hmm. to the highest standard 
and 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 continues to raise said standard so that she can then hold herself to the now higher standard. I like you know, which is not um, intimidating at all when you work beside it, her. <laughs> <laughs> She's I, I've I've never been more terrified than when like having it like full on in the weeds like you know blunt discussion with Denise. I've never been more terrified yeah. of another human being. But, but then, how much did you grow? Oh, I mean. Like we talked about in the, when I shared my story with Denise on the podcast, like it just, it's re, yeah. it literally took me from wherever the fuck I was and just immediately just plopped me right back on track off it was going, so you that, know, and I, I hit the track with the real wheels spinning. So it's, so we were at 40 minutes. We told ourselves we we're going to do a 40 minute AMRAP. I'll, I'll yep. do a quick story um, because it's funny. I talked to Denise after that episode and yep. I remember, I remember the phrase that you used was like, she called you a Barry's boot camp instructor or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I was like, if you want and, to be on seminar staff, it's nowhere near fucking good enough. Well, and, and I and I recalled that and she immediately was like, That's because he was acting like a Barry's boot camp instructor. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, But I felt yeah. bad later. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, see, I told you, I was like, cause Lachlan was like, Yeah, Denise came in and was like, I may have like gone a little <laughs> bit too far with that. Um but I mean she she wasn't wrong. And I mean and, and I still love that you, you know, she also remembers that yeah. moment and um uh and and she stands by her statement because it wasn't it wasn't an untrue statement no no and, and that's and that's it, awesome yeah it's so yeah invest short version invest in yourselves coaches and trainers so that you can get the things and the resources you need to level up what you provide and level up your own value and do more good in your mm -hmm. community. Uh, so value yeah. is the topic of discussion. Yay, 40 minute yeah. AMRAP version. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna skip on this. Everybody, if, if you're gonna celebrate it, have a very Merry Christmas and otherwise a happy holiday. Mm -hmm. We'll be back next week. Uh, yeah. Maybe with a special guest? We're not sure yet, we're gonna figure that out. <laughs> we keep trying to nail people down, but holidays, you know. It, it's hard, but we're gonna keep it's, trying. It's hard time, we're keep, yes. just keep harassing people. We can probably get somebody, we'll see. Absolutely. Just find someone off the street. Hey, you wanna talk about stuff? Cool. Great. We'll talk about fitness. Let me tell you about our Lord and Savior, CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> our Lord and Savior, Dave Castro. Right. All right. Kevin, happy holidays, sir. We'll talk to you soon. All right. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Peace, brother.